Welcome to Film Therapy, the unofficial, unlicensed movie podcast. Hello. Hello. I'm here. I'm existing. That's good. Better than not. Yeah, well, we definitely got some film therapy today. Got one of the most nostalgic childhood movies for uh, both of us. I am uh, Jake, and I am joined, as always, by my esteemed colleague, Madison Matthews. Yes, new name, new me. No, she's still the same. New name, same me. All of your good qualities are still the same. I got married. She did. Got married, and Jake got engaged. I did. Guys, it's been a minute. Things have happened. Things have happened. Guess where him and his fiance met? Right here! If you want to find out, listen to episode 15. We talk about The Breakfast Club. Our guest was my best friend, Emily Goble, and that was the to- first time that these two interacted in more like phone call style, and it was amazing. Things happened, chemistry was there, and then it just blossomed. Look where we are now. And you also went and got yourself married, and that was that was great. It was great. It was so fun. We had a wonderful time. Yeah, you guys had such a beautiful ceremony and such a fun celebration afterward. It was Aww. it was just it was so great. I was honored to be there. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, and then uh, we went on our honeymoon, so we've been gone for quite a while, but we're back now. We have come back. We're going to get back into it. There's no more wedding planning. Well, now it's your turn to do the wedding planning. So God hopefully damn it. we can still concurrently plan and do the episodes. <laughs> but it is hard. I will do my hardest. And if you need breaks whenever, just let me know, of course. Okay, I need a break right now. I'll see you in five months. Oh, okay. All right. See ya. Okay, so so this movie is either G or PG. It's probably PG. But um, um so I guess we can't say fuck. Should we just get rid of that rule? <laughs> it's it's a new it's a new season. Welcome to season three. We say fuck for kids movies now. <laughs> okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. So we just watched this movie, um, and and it, and it was it was a really fun time. It's it's a movie that, and I, I I'm sure you'll agree with this. It's a movie I hold very dear to my heart because it was like it was like my favorite movie to watch around halloween whenever it was on disney channel yeah tomorrow on disney channel at his new school tony's having the same old problems but this time he's found a best friend who's a vampire now two friends will stand together hang together and take off together with a herd of vampire cows so don't have a cow watch one fly watch the little vampire starring Stuart little's jonathan lipnicki tomorrow at 8 7 central on disney channel it really hit me when the the announcer was like and their team of vampire cows (laughs) that part for me is like that just like sent me back right there I love those nostalgic Disney Channel things. Yeah, I love I love the Disney Channel narrators, all of them. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, if I guess we haven't said it, um, we're going to be talking about the Little Vampire from I don't know what year, but uh, nineteen. The year two thousand. The year the year two thousand. It's directed by U- Uli Adel. Adel. Uli Adel. I think it's Uli probably. Uli Adel. Or Uli. Okay. Uli Adel. Uli Edel. I guess so. Oh, he's Germany, so yeah, like Uli Edel. Stars uh, Jonathan Lipnicki, Rollo Weeks, uh, Anna Popowell, Richard E. Grant, Alice Krieg, Jim Carter, and Teresa Banks. Teresa Banks. <laughs> Pamela Gidley. Pamela Gidley. Oh, she actually passed away. That's sad. Yeah, she did. She was only 52. Man. We'll get into her character in a minute. Um... <laughs> Teresa Banks? <laughs> yes. But yeah, this movie I've loved ever since I was a child. Uh, I probably mm-hmm. saw it right when it came out. I did have it on VHS at one point, but now I have it on DVD. Got it at Goodwill a couple of years ago. Great addition to my collection. And Jake and I watched it a long time. Did we? We watched it on your small little TV, right? I think so. You know what? I, I think we watched it twice 
because I think we watched it on my small little TV and then we watched it on on like at your place too. Yeah, that that sounds right. We've actually watched this three times. That's cool. <laughs> That's why I feel like we've recorded on it before because we've just like watched it and talked about it a lot. Well, we just need to make it a tradition to watch this every year. Yeah, it's a great one. Um, I first saw this, as, as stated before, I first saw this on Disney Channel. And, um, and I never had it on VHS. And I searched high and low. I would go to Walmart and ask if they had it. And they didn't. I couldn't find it anywhere. So whenever it was on Disney Channel, I was always like, I gotta watch this. It's like, it's like my favorite October movie. Yes. And then years later, I found the DVD. And I think that's how we, I think that's how we watched it. And it's funny because it doesn't even really take place in the fall or... And I think it's probably in the spring or summer or early, early fall because it's so green in Scotland. Yes. Um, I was thinking about that. Like, I I wish it was like had fall colors when they were like flying over mm-hmm. Scotland. Mm-hmm. That would be really cool. But there are some really cool aerial shots of Scotland. It's such a beautiful place. Yeah. And like it still has the feel of fall, even though it's like not quite the leaves are falling era of fall yet. Yeah. Maybe because he like goes to a new school and it feels like the beginning of a school year or something. Mm -hmm, mm-hmm mm-hmm that helps so do you want to do you want to give a rundown of the premise of the story real quick sure so little tony thompson jonathan lip mickey moves to scotland with his mom and dad his dad got a job building a golf course at this estate um of a man named lord mccashton um and he happens to have two boys that go to the same school as tony and they are his bullies so he's having rough times at school Uh, But he has these dreams where he sees a a comet and an amulet and a group of vampires doing a ritual or something happening. And so he's obsessed with this idea of vampires and he plays them in his free time. And then he actually meets a boy vampire who comes into his room after he's trying to escape the local vampire hunter. And so they become best friends the little vampire takes him on flying journeys introduces him to his family and he's totally engrossed in the whole lifestyle of vampires for a little bit then they realize that he has a connection toward the amulet that they're supposed to find before the next comet comes so that they can lift the the curse of being vampires so then tony helps this family find the amulet and eventually frees them from their curse perfect i guess because Tony's not a vampire, but when you think of the title The Little Vampire, like, you think about him, like, acting like a vampire. Right, right. But the, really, The Little Vampire is Rudolph. That's true. I, I can't believe I didn't think of that before. <laughs> I love, I love, like, all the, the acting in it and all the actors who play the vampires are so awesome. They are. They're so great. And they all have, like, like, like even though we don't have a lot of time like dedicated to all of them except for rudolph really like they all feel like they're such distinct characters and like they all have like diff with different like personalities and you really get the sense that like they've been a family for like hundreds of years you know Mm-hmm. definitely why didn't this get five movies why did twilight get five movies <laughs> <laughs> well they are much deserving as well of course but of course <laughs> the little vampire yeah i would have loved to see well, I don't know. I am not I'm not a huge fan of sequels and like drawing things out just to draw things out. So I like that it just ended the way it did, but I could imagine like a sequel maybe where Yeah, what would it even be? Cuz they're human at the end. Well, I don't know, you know, because he lifted the curse and he freed like all the vampires. So it would have to be like a vampire that came in from or like maybe they move back to um the United States and encounter vampires there or something i don't know <laughs> they, they encounter the collins oh snap <laughs> when bella walks into the room and like edward's like staring at her just just cut in instead it's jonathan it's it's tony from this movie with his little fake fangs yeah yeah oh my gosh i think so this the actor who plays Ro- uh, rudolph rollo weeks yes yes he was in um girl with a pearl earring the thief lord Attila, he played young Attila, uh, booked out Mr. Nice, Sherry. Eh, that's pretty much it. I've never seen any of those movies, have you? Oh, Onion. No, I have not. No, I have not. Okay, so I know this movie is based on a book, but I haven't read the, uh, it's, yeah, so it's a book series. Mm-hmm. By Angela Summer Bodenberg. Yes. 
So the first book is from 1979, and there is one, two, three, four, five. There's 21 books, and 16 of them have been translated into English. Were they originally German? Yeah, they were originally German. Okay. And it's funny because one of the later books is The Little Vampire Meets Count Dracula. Oh. And that could have been the sequel. There we go. It, 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 it doesn't say like when they, when they came out and stuff. So there, there were a couple uh, German-Canadian uh, TV series um, based on the books. Mm. And then there was, there was this movie. And then in 2017, there was a, uh, a movie called The Little Vampire 3D. Yeah. Jim Carter plays Rookery again. He's the guy that's trying to get oh. the vampires. Nice. And uh and then and then Alice Creed plays the mom again. Oh cool. But I don't know if if, if it's like a if if it's another one or like like if it it seems like it's a totally different thing. It seems like a remake, but like more yeah. like ki- kids friendly, kid friendly. I mean, this is pretty kid friendly. This, this didn't like scare me as a kid or anything. That's true. Okay, so the synopsis is Rudolph, a 13-year-old vampire, meets Tony, a mortal boy his age who loves old castles, graveyards, and vampires. Tony helps Rudolph fight against notorious vampire Hunter, and they save Rudolph's family and become friends. So maybe a little simpler of a plot. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe this movie does a couple of the books or something. You know, like, like we don't, we don't know. Yeah. The family name Sackville Bag is a reference to the Lord of the Rings. Bilbo and Frodo are related to the Sackville Bagginses. Oh my god, how did I not know that? How did I not see that? How did I not realize that? Oh my god. Um, and then Richard E. Grant and Jim Carter would later reunite in the fifth season of Downton Abbey. Oh yes, I know that, um, yeah, Jim Carter was in Downton Abbey. His character is much different, but he does a great job. <laughs> uh, there's a scene in the beginning when he takes Rudolph to the cow- Tony takes Rudolph to the cows, and then- Tony almost gets run over, and then um and then Rudolph grabs him and sa- and says, "Shut your eyes, Tony," or whatever he says. Yeah. But then, but then, but then, in the next scene is when they say, "Hi, I'm Tony. Hi, I'm Rudolph." So unless he says it twice and I missed it. Oh, interesting. So like he knew his name before he even said it, mm-hmm. or like it was a mess up or something. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Also, when he when he first meets him, he's like, he's like, "What clan are you from, brother?" And then and then he then like like he notices his fangs are fake, and he's like. You're not a brother, and Tony's like, "Well, I'm not a sister." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just so many like, like great like quotes in this movie. Um, like when the parents, when Rudolph's parents meet Tony's parents. Oh, that's and so then, funny. And then, and then they're like, they're like, "Oh, those are great costumes," and he's like, "This is not a costume. I am an aristocrat." <laughs> <laughs> and 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 every everything that um that Rudolph's sister says is just adorable. Yeah, she's so dramatic and, uh, uh, what's the word? Love spell. Love stricken. L- love struck. Yeah. Love struck. <laughs> it was filmed in Scotland. Okay. Yep. But then they had a Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers studio was in Germany that they did the rest of. Ooh, okay. Scotland, 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 Scotland. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. So some of the other actors in this have been in things you may have recognized. Um... The sister, Rudolph's sister, her name is Anna. Anna, Anna Popplewell, and her name also na- her name in the movie is Anna too. Um, she played Susan in the Narnia films from the early two thousands. Yes. Um, and then we've got well, Jonathan Lipnicki, of course, Stuart Little, and um, various other childhood memories like Mike, Jerry Maguire. Oh well, yeah, he is in Like Mike, isn't he? Yeah, that's funny. I was just editing our episode 60, and you mentioned that movie, Like Mike. Oh, I haven't seen that in a long time. Me either. Um, We've got Richard E. Grant. What else has he been in? Nothing that I've really seen. He's known for Gosford Park, Can You Ever Forgive Me, and Hudson Hawk, with and with Nail and I. He's also in... uh... Logan, Corpse Bride, uh, uh, Coppola's Dracula. Oh, okay. About Time. Oh, okay. Oh, a series of unfortunate events. Oh, yeah, he's in that too. The series, not the movie. The, uh, the series, yeah, I think so. Hitman's Bodyguard. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh, he's in uh, Game of Thrones. Isambaro. <laughs> Isambaro. Eisenbarrow, probably. I don't know. 
Um, anyway, he was great. It's it, it's so funny because you're like, I don't think I've seen him in anything. Oh, he's in Game of yeah. Thrones. <laughs> then we've got Alice Krieg, who is in another film therapy classic, Sleepwalkers. Enough said. Where she also plays a mother in that movie. Also a mother. Um, she's in... The scene... <laughs> what? The scene... The, the scene... Sorry. The scene <laughs> when they came to the door... <laughs> And, she, and the dad opens the door and she's yeah. there. It's just like the same same exact scene happens in Sleepwalkers. She's like, hello, are you mesmerized by my beauty? Yeah, and then, and then, and then in Sleepwalkers, she throws a woman out the window and blows up a car. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite do that this time, but you um, know. No, but that's okay. That's why we watch Sleepwalkers and The Little Vampire. What if she is the reincarnation of... Of whatever her name is in Sleepwalkers. Um, or. 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 She becomes a vampire after Sleepwalkers. Even though, spoilers, she dies at the end of the movie. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Forgot that. Of Sleepwalkers, yeah. <laughs> but also it wouldn't make sense because because it's like, it's like they've been vampires for like 300 years or something. And then like in Sleepwalkers, it's like also like the late 80s early 90s and they've been around for a long time the 80 yeah 90 92 yeah uh um <laughs> just i just love that movie the the, the 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 scene like like the scene just that whole the whole rampage she goes on where she picks up she picks up shelly and they get in the car and then she drives through the garage window <laughs> and then the cat jumps at her and she picks it up with one hand <laughs> and then and then she gets like a she gets like shot with a shotgun and then her face changes and then the other guy drops the gun and runs away. <laughs> like bro, at least you keep your gun. <laughs> oh, that's the greatest movie ever made. It really is. Anyway, um Little Vampire is also really great. Um you you were talking about uh, other actors and you were talking about Richard E. Grant and Alice Creech. Alice so. Is it Creech? Creech. Creek. I don't know. Creek Creech. So then we've got Pamela Gidley, who I looked up um, during the movie and told Jake the greatest fact ever that she was in Twin Peaks and Firewalk with me as a character named Teresa Banks, who was the first girl to get murdered in Twin Peaks. Yes. So that was in 90. Oh, so. Oh, yeah. So that was uh, eight years before she did this movie. Mm-hmm. I was looking up the dad, Tommy's dad, or Tony's dad. <laughs> He's in Leatherheads, Mad About You, Back to the Beach. Um, I haven't seen any of those movies. But I feel like I've seen him in, like, some other, like, kids, kids shows or something. He's got, like, that Disney Channel vibe, you know? He he looks like the dad from Wizards of Waverly Place, but it's not. Oh, uh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Because that's what I was thinking the whole movie. I was like, wait, is 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 he one of the Deloises? Is he Peter, Michael, or David? And he's none of them. Ah, okay. He's not. He's not. He's not Mr. Russo or Dagwood or Piccolo, unfortunately. So. Ah, all right. Well, yeah, maybe that's what I was like envisioning in my head. The whole movie i was like oh is that who that is and i looked it up and i'm like oh wait no it's not oh you're gonna like this um dean cook who plays gregory is in highlander mm -hmm. which highlander highlander the original <laughs> yeah okay, nope I, 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 nope i gotta nope, look up who he nope, is nope my bad tv series highlander oh i haven't seen that yet he plays young Young Max. Who's Max? It's a death sentence. A high security prison. <laughs> McLeod, your time is now. <laughs> then he smashes the earth. <laughs> oh, Max, Max Jupe? I don't know. Oh, no, no, because, because uh, there's a scene in Highlander 2 when Sean Connery says, who's Max? And Virginia Madsen's like, it's a death sentence. A high security prison. Oh, my God. Good job. Good catch. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> No, we noticed um, this detail that the boys who are Lord McAshton's sons likely um, have 
two dads because when they come in when they um when tony and rudolph go to scare them one night they're screaming in their beds and then lord mccash lord mccashton comes in and then another guy was like right behind him he didn't say anything he's barely in the shot but like who else would that be other than his other dad right or their other dad exactly exactly so that's unique yeah yeah i mean especially for like you know a movie made in 2000 yeah but that's pretty cool that like they they just have it in the background it's not like a whole thing they have to address i feel like Mm -hmm. nowadays it is it's like let's make a point to have two dads because you know but like they just threw it in i thought that was nice yeah yeah in the scene where um where uh uh Tony and Rudolph go well, well first of all I think that right before that he meets his family and then um and then and then and then and then and then, and then Tony's like like oh yeah this happens to me at school every day and then Ru- Rudolph doesn't like that so then so then they go and um scare the other two guys and then Tony just spends the rest of the movie just like being in charge of them and is like you will carry my books for me and like go go <laughs> to, go to, go crawl to your back to your room <laughs> and they call him master yeah <laughs> yes it's a good uh bully up comments come up and st- <laughs> come up and see me sometime come up and see me sometime <laughs> um that that that, that that there was a book I read when I was younger, and 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 that was like one of the chapters, and that was that was like the first time I heard the word comeuppance because it was like when I was really young. I think um you taught me the word comeuppance when during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you know what? It was one. It was one of the Captain Underpants books, actually. Oh, really? Um, that makes sense. Like because because like all the all the chapter titles are like puns and stuff. I think. But, like, that was, like, the... I read that when I was in, like, second or third grade, and that was the first time I ever heard the word comeuppance, so... That's funny. So that's what I think of every time I say it. Come up and and see me 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 (laughs) They could have also done something with pants, like Captain Underpants. Come up pants. Yes. I don't know. Um, okay, what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, let's talk about the um, the song in the credits. Oh yeah, so 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 I was actually really in tune with the emotions of the movie, and I really yes. loved like the last the last like two scenes are just amazing because I know everybody can everybody converges and Tony's parents kill the bad guy and like Tony makes his wish and everybody just like just uh, th- everybody vanishes. And it's, like, really sad. And, like, the next scene, like, it's been, like, a few days or weeks later or the next day or something. And then Tony looks over and he sees Rudolph and Anna and they're, and they're human now. And they don't recognize him at first. But then he, but then it's set up earlier because, um, I guess I'll have to back up. So, so, so earlier in the movie, uh, Tony has the vampires come stay with him because they're being hunted by, by Rookery. So, so, uh, so then, so then, uh, Anna comes into his room and says if you ever need me you can just whistle for me and I'll find you because you know she's like in love with him and then and then that happens later because Tony gets stuck in a coffin and then they go and save him and then the end of the movie is he he whistles to them again and then that's how they that's how they remember him and it's like a really sweet like Mm -hmm. final note to end the movie on and the score is like really triumphant and really moving and then, and, then, and, then, and then it just cuts to a song that's like, you're a grandma, my grandma. And it's like, what? <laughs> oh, it's God. like, no. <laughs> what is what this? Even, what even is that song? It's like, a... oh boy, now I'm going to have to look it up and sing it. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. How would you rate the little vampire? IMDB asks me. Hmm. Pretty highly. It's by the Dixie Cups. It's called Eco Eco. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandma and your grandma were sitting by the fire. My grandma told your grandma, I'm going to set your flag on fire. What? Talking about, hey now, hey now, hey now. Eco Eco This is what day. dreams are made of. Giacomo Fina. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hey now. <laughs> 
Wait, wait, wait. No, that, 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 that sounds like the Lizzie McGuire theme. Yeah. Okay, I... Uh, yeah, I really don't know what their thought process was behind this. It was like, oh, yay, fun um, kids movie, the end. But, like, really, you're like, oh, So sweet. You're just in the yeah, vibe, and, and then, like, we're like, it would have been better to just continue with the score, maybe, for, like, at least a little bit. Yeah, at least until, like, the, the, the like, like, until, like, the title or the cast starts or something, you know? Right, right. Because, like, when you, because that, that's one thing that, like, Harry Potter always does. Like, they always do the mm-hmm. score during the credits, and the Pirates movies always do the score during the credits. Yeah, like, at least the big names and, like, the big names of the movie and everything until it gets to... You know, until it gets to, like, the scrolling cast. Scrolling cast. But to be fair, um, we talked about Highlander earlier, and those movies don't do that. They have songs over the credits. But also, the first movie has, like, like the soundtrack is by Queen, and so they have a Queen song over the credits. So at, that least, makes at sense. least it's fitting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, okay, this song by the Dixie Cups, like, we don't, we're not really aware, well, other than the scene with the Game Boy, We're not really aware of like what time frame this takes place in. Like it could be, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it could take place like in any era. Um, But then Mm -hmm. we've got like, so it's not like we've seen like or heard these pop culture songs or like any sort of idea of what era we're in. And then it just Mm -hmm. like comes in with the 60s song like, bop, 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 beep, bop. And it's just on, I don't know. I didn't like it. Sorry. No, I didn't like it either. Not but sorry. that that song that that song is also in Mission Impossible too, when Tom Cruise is rock climbing. <laughs> That's weird too. Ikuikuaye, ande. I wonder what it means. Here, what is the meaning? It tells of a parade collision between two tribes of Mardi Gras Indians. What does that have to do with two grandmas oh. sitting down? Let's see. Like a Fat Tuesday song. <laughs> what? You know, like Fat Tuesday uh, is the day that you eat a bunch of stuff before Mardi Gras. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I, I thought you were talking about Fat Tuesday. That was like a rapper or something. Oh. <laughs> like that was the artist of the song. No, the the group that recorded it was called the Dixie Cups. Uh, okay. And, uh, yeah, so it tells of a parade collision between two tri- tribes, in quotes, of Mardi Gras Indians. There's a spy boy or spy dog, a lookout for one band of Indians, spy kid, encountering the flag boy for another band. He threatens to set the flag on fire. So it's like a, like a war, a, like a war song that have to do with the vampires in Scotland? Oh. When the Dixie Cups released the song, they didn't know the or- origins of it. They'd only heard their mother sing it. Interesting. Hi, Grandma. You're a grandma. Sitting by the fire. <laughs> Gosh dang, that's going to be stuck <laughs> in my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, when uh, the other thing I want to say is, when Gregory, the older brother, is swinging the amulet around and calling the other vampires, that reminded me of The Exorcist 2. Because oh, yeah. in The Exorcist 2, <laughs> such a weird movie. In The Exorcist 2, um, Regan does the same thing. She picks up this, like, amulet or whatever, and there's a bunch of locusts swarming around her, and she starts swinging it, and the, and the Ennio Morricone music starts playing, and it's, like, this beautiful song, but it's just her, like, <laughs> swinging a fucking amulet. <laughs> <laughs> to, to like to like get a swarm of locusts or whatever it's it's so it's so weird i love it very weird um so it reminded me of that and then and then and then the guy co- the bad guy comes into the room and and he's just like jack nicholson in the shining right he busts down the door with his mallet and sticks his face in and they they set up the shot similar to the shining and he's like i'm coming <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, like, a couple nods to some classic horror films there. Mm-hmm. Good job. Good job, Yuli. Uli. Uli, Yuli. Oh, yeah, then we gotta talk about the, the cow interludes. So, not unlike The Great Outdoors and 
um, The Boy Who Could Fly, we have some interludes of com comedy where um, the farmer comes and checks on his cows who have been uh, fed on by the vampires. So at first, uh, Tony takes Rudolph to go feed on one of the cows. We have these interludes with funny music that goes do 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 Oh no, that's the Eco Eco song. But it's kind of like <laughs> upbeat, funky music where we see the farmer go and check on his cows and he sees how many are in the field and he counts them up and uh, there's one missing. So he goes in the barn and then the cow is has turned into a vampire so it's got red eyes and it turns it and turns around and hisses at him for coming in and lighting up the room. And then it comes back and back again where more and more of his cows have become vampires. So... And at the very end, when the the curse has been lifted, his cows return to normal. So don't worry, they're all good. Yeah. Did you did you have any other things about this movie you wanted to talk about? Um. Let's talk about the the flashbacks, like the black the backstory. Oh yeah. So Tony and the dad Frederick share a vision at one point. This is when he is accepted by his family and. And starts to help them find the amulet. So they, they see this vision of the group of vampires doing their ritual with the amulet. And then it's kind of goes into Tony's dream a little bit that he had. Where the one vampire is diving at him. Is diving into the water to grab the amulet. So you see then him and this woman running around um, with the amulet. And she takes the amulet and places her cape over the vampire um in like a cave and uh it's got like this crest sigil on it that then tony investigates and it turns out is lord mccashton's crest family crest so then he knows that lord mccashton's involved and he goes into this whole luth situation where he goes to goes to lord mccashton's house with his dad the next day for work and does a little digging and rookery happens to be there so mm -hmm, he follows mm -hmm. them and Finds out about their ancestor, Elizabeth, who was the person that he saw in the vision. And um, the coffin is empty, so then he falls in the coffin and Rookery traps him in the coffin. That's right. Yes. That was a good scene. That's, that's like, intense. Like, that's, like, scary. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, then, and then that, that's when Anna and Rudolph go to save him. Right. Which is so sweet, the way they, they communicate through their sweet whistle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also have <laughs> a memory of, you know, so when Gregory's swinging the amulet around, it's making that certain noise, like the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or like a, uh, you, you know, like a, wh a whistle when things are sw being swirled yes, above your yes. head. <laughs> yes, so as a, as a kid, I had this little toy. It was like a noisemaker thing that sometimes you get at like sports games, um, mm -hmm where it's a tube, like a plastic tube, and when I swung that around my head, it made the same noise. And so <laughs> it's like, ah, I'm Gregory summoning the vampires. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I think I also had a crush on him when I watched the movie. Makes sense. He's a bad boy. <laughs> he is, though. He's got eyeliner. He's goth. He's goth. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I I just love all their aesthetics, all the vampires. I know. Yes, the big Victorian collars that they have, the parents have, are so cool. Mm hmm That's like, I don't know what I'm going to be for Halloween this year. I was like, maybe I'll just do something like that. But they're not costumes, because they're aristocrats. We are aristocrats. So we've got the, we've got the dad... Um, who, who, who seems like really stern, but then like he turns out to be like a really, like, 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 like him and Tony have this moment at the end and he, they're like, like, they're, like they're good and everything. Yeah. I mean, I can understand that. Yeah. It also kind of reminds me of the, of the Disney, of Disney movies doing that. Like Tarzan does that. Um, mm. and, uh, uh, what other Disney movies do that? Like have the strict father figure. Yeah, then then at the end they have the moment of understanding. But I guess that's, I guess that's with his own stepdad, whereas yeah. like Tony isn't. That's not Tony's dad, right? I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah. And I, thought, I, thought I, would, I thought I would have more examples. 
Yeah. I mean, you know the trope. I'm sure you've seen it in like mm-hmm. the things where the, the dad is super strict and kind of intimidating. And then the end, they come together and realize each other's needs and differences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hooray. And then the mom is just super sympathetic with her children. The dad just tries she- to blame them for everything. And she's like, well, you know, maybe we should listen to them. You know, everybody has a different point of view. <laughs> <laughs> super nice exactly. and loving exactly mm-hmm. do you think you'd ever want to watch the 2017 animated little vampire hmm. i don't think so unless we were to watch it right now <laughs> it feels like it kind of feels like when they did the cg remake of the first pokemon movie And, like, it was just really, it was this exact same movie, but with really awful CG. And, like, it just, it just wasn't good. It feels like it might be that. Yeah. I agree. I mean, we could watch it if you're curious. Like, I'd be, I'd be down to knock it off the, of the list of movies I've seen. And we don't have to finish it if it's bad. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. You're like, you're like, we should do this. I don't know. I don't know. No, no, probably not. Do you want to talk about what we've watched recently? Sure. Um, That might take a little bit of time, but okay. (laughs) Yeah, I've got I've got a couple that I watched um, like this week. And other than that, I probably have not watched a movie since uh, we last recorded, basically. Okay. well, I don't do do some highlights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying I don't know if I have anything major. Um, okay, so, um, are you going to go first or would you rather I go first? You can go first. Okay, so I don't know if I said this last time, so we'll, we can go back and check, but I, I watched every single Indiana Jones movie up until Dial of Destiny. So I watched all 22 of the young Indiana Jones movies and then all of the Harrison Ford movies and then the new one. Oh my God. And the new one was Okay. It wasn't my favorite. It was just kind of okay. But, um, yeah. It's okay. Um, it's okay. It's, it's not great, but it's not, it's not amazing for me personally. But I really, I really liked how it ended, so. Okay. Um, was it a conclusive ending to the Indiana Jones series? Yes. Very, very much so. Did he die? No. Spoilers. But, okay. um, but in between Crystal Skull, the fourth one, and this one, um, Shia LaBeouf's character went off to war and died. Oh, of course. Okay. So Shia is not in it because they literally fucking killed him off, and that was really interesting. Um, and then the the, the, the movie ends with uh, him and Marion having like reconcil because it because they were drifted apart after he died. Then the movie right. ends and they have reconciliation and like he um like they kind of they do a repeat of one of their scenes from the very first movie and that was really sweet. Oh, okay, that's cute. And then I saw Across the Spider Verse. Which was incredible. Yeah, good. Um, I, 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 uh, part, part one. I cannot wait for part two. Whenever that comes out. There's a part two. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 two parts. Part one is across the Spider Verse, and part two is beyond the Spider Verse. Oh boy. So it's um, it was it's really good. Yeah, I want to watch that again. Does it relate a lot to the first um animated Spider Man? Was it the Amazing Spider Man? In, into the Spider Verse, yes. Into the Spider Verse. To that, it's a sequel like a... to that. So. A direct sequel. Okay. Yeah, direct sequel. Because I almost watched it the other day, but I was like, I don't really remember what happened in Into the Spider Verse, so I'm gonna probably have to rewatch that one. And yeah. Yeah, I, I I would say because because it really benefits from watching the first movie and then going into the second one. Okay. Good to know. And then um, also watched. Um, I also watched the Dungeons and Dragons movie, which I enjoyed. Oh, me too. Yeah, I thought that was really good. And I, I did watch Yodorowsky's Dune, the documentary about the movie of Dune that did not get made. Oh, yeah. How was that? Um, it was interesting, but I'm really glad that movie didn't get made. <laughs> um, I, will, I don't know if I sent, I will send you my review because I don't really have the energy to, um, to go into it. But what I, what I wrote, I think, is basically... Uh, my thoughts okay and i have the same i have the same thing for the uh so 
there's been three adaptations of Dune. There's the David Lynch movie, the Denis Villeneuve movie, and then there was also a, a TV version on sci-fi in the early 2000s. And I also watched that. And that is by far my least favorite of the three. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And obviously I'm biased because I love both the Lynch movie and the Villeneuve. Like, they're two of my favorite movies of all time. But um, the miniseries one kind of sucked. And then I saw... Um, so, so I sent you my reviews, Maddie, if you want to read them. And you can always tag them in the... Uh, put them in the description or whatever if you want to. If other people want to read it. Okay. And then I saw Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Um, which was amazing. Really? I love those movies. Yeah, I love those movies. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm excited for part two next year. Um, it felt very similar to the first movie, and the first mission is like probably, it's one of my favorites, if not my favorite of the series, just because because it's like so, like I, I, I love most of those movies, but like the first, I just love the feel of the first one so much. I love like all the Brian De Palma-isms and stuff. It's like a dang good movie. And then the the new the newest one felt like it was like going back to that style a lot, but still maintaining like the current stuff, and it was just so cool. And then obviously I saw Barbenheimer. Oh yes, Oppenheimer was great, and Barbie is one of the ha, Bar- Barbie has like some of the greatest moments in cinema ever. Oh dang! Like 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 Margot Robbie is amazing. Ryan Gosling is like like lifetime level performance like so so fucking good really um and and greta gerwig is obviously it's it's just great i still haven't seen it i cannot believe myself but i've been waiting for it to come out on uh red box so i'm gonna uh, i'll probably see it this week um but yeah oh my gosh barbie has like i, I don't want to spoil anything but like there's moments in that movie that are just like instantly iconic like when you're watching it you're just like this is like a Like, this is, like, a defining moment in cinema, and I'm getting to see it while it happens kind of thing. Wow. Not to overhype it. (laughs) I know it's, I know it's super hyped, so I'm going in with low expectations, but, uh. But just go in just thinking, hey, this might be a fun movie, and and just see how it takes you, just see where it takes you. Yeah. And then I watched, um, this movie called Dracula 2000. Oh, God. So I went to Walmart and they had, and in their DVD bin, they had a three pack called the Wes Craven Collection, and it was a Dracula trilogy. And I'm like, this sounds really interesting. And for like uh-huh. six, seven dollars, sure, I'll get it. Oh. So I got. So the first one's called Dracula Two Thousand, and let me tell you, it's one of the most two thousands movies of all time. <laughs> it's got Gerard Butler. It's got Gerard <laughs> Butler as Dracula. And, um, yeah, oh and, my God. um, and there's just Marilyn Manson music playing and like other, Ooh. like that kind of vibe playing and every girl just wants to fuck him. And even though he's Dracula <laughs> and, and, and you like, mean because he's Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's Dracula and because he's Gerard Butler. So the Bram Stoker novel of Dracula exists in the universe of this movie. So it's, it's an interesting movie. And then I watched Dracula 2, like, the day after, because I had such a great... Like, the first movie is not, like, good, but it's, like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really fun to watch. And then I watched the second one, and it's one of the most boring movies I've ever seen in my life. Gerard Butler's not in it. It has nothing to do with the first movie. It sucks. And so I haven't seen the third one. And these are all Wes Craven? Uh, it's a, they say Wes Craven presents, but I think he was just a producer on them. Oh, uh, got it. The director is a man named Patrick Luce- Lucere. Well, good for Patrick. Who also directed My Bloody Valentine and Drive Angry. Okay. Um, let's see. What else did I watch? Oh, and I and I watched uh, Fast X because um, I hadn't seen Fast X yet. Okay. Um, it was super disappointing. I didn't like it very much. Um, it's, it's a bummer because Fast 9, F9 was so good and this one was just... Although Jason Momoa is great in it. Oh, he's in it? Okay. Yeah, he's the bad guy. Oh. But it... But in terms of like Fast and Furious movies, like to me, it's like very low on the scale. It's like the, it's like one of the worst ones in my opinion. Was that a definitive end to the series, or they're gonna make more? No, they're gonna make. Th- it was going to be the last one, but now they're going to make two more. Oh my god! So no, it wasn't very good. And and when when Tuan and I walked out of the theater for F nine, we were like, oh my gosh, like. 
so optimistic about the future of these movies, have no idea what they're going to do. And like, <laughs> and like, it's, it's, this movie was so like F9 was so great. And like having, having no new movies to go see for a year and then having that, it was just such a wonderful experience. And oh, then, was that your and, first one back? Mm-hmm. Like we had just moved oh, okay. in and that was our first one back and we had been waiting and we watched all the ones previously. It was such a wonderful time. And then this one, like when it ended, like I'm just like, I f- I'm feeling all the things we felt at the end of F9, but like the opposite, like in a, like in a sad way rather than like a, oh, I'm excited for the future of this series kind of way. Oh man. Kind, ca- kind of like the last Star Wars, except it's not the last one. So I guess you'll see where they'll go from there. I, I wonder if, uh, did it get like bad reviews overall? I think think so but these movies kind of always get not very positive reviews actually yeah. i'm sorry let me double check that most of the movies except for like five six and seven have all gotten pretty mixed to bad reviews and then i actually had not seen hobbs and shaw so i watched it the the spinoff movie and it's mm-hmm. one of the worst movies i've ever seen in my life i fucking oh, hated wow every second of it. really yeah yeah so so i i so the, so the opening scene is vanessa kirby and idris elba and that was great because, you know, love both those actors. And then and then the next scene, Hobbs and Shaw showed up and I'm like, this this is this is not good. So my letterbox review, I put Hobbs and for, for Hobbs and Shaw, I put this was great until Hobbs and Shaw showed up. <laughs> Just made it worse. Just made it worse because, oh, my God. And, and like 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 they're trying to do the buddy comedy dynamic of like Lethal Weapon or something. But like neither of them is the straight man. They're the exact same character. So there's no dynamic between the two of them. They're oh just, they're, they just, they just hate each other. Like, like the whole, like there's so many moments in the movie where I'm like, they are so close. They are just going to just like kiss or something. Um, <laughs> but like, cause, because, because they get up in each other's grill and they're like, I hate you. I hate you too. And I put, yeah. I think when I, when I texted to and I'm like, 20 minutes into Hobbs and Shaw, I already hate this. They're the same character. It's so dull. That's dumb. And like, and like, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like any of the other movies. It feels like it's its own thing. And like, it's so, it's so dumb. I won't watch it. No, no, don't. Don't watch it. If, if you watch every other one of those movies, you don't need to watch this one. Like, which, I which... don't want to watch any of those movies. <laughs> well, then you're good. <laughs> So, so, so the, the next one they're going to do is called Hobbs and Reyes, and then they're gonna do uh, two. Uh, then they're gonna do the main line eleven and twelve, and that's gonna be the finale. I guess there's three oh more movies god. technically. Oh my god! Too but obviously, many. it's it, but obviously it was put on hold because of the strikes and stuff. So, but anyway, yeah. What are some things you've watched recently? Let's see. So I started watching movies again um, when. Basically, when we were on our flight to to get married, and then um, since then, I've been watching some movies because we had long flights, and I watched some on the planes. Mm-hmm. Well, I did watch Asteroid City in the theater, so that was awesome. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. I love that one a lot. It might be my favorite Wes Anderson now. Ooh, okay. Um, we did go see Oppenheimer as well, like the next week. Um, I wasn't a huge fan. To me, it was just kind of boring, lots of like political jargon and stuff but i'm not i wasn't like super familiar with everything that went on during that time so i Mm -hmm. was kind of lost in the history a little bit Mm -hmm. um but i like when the atomic bomb go boom that's good josh pressed the button josh pressed the button yes he did yeah josh josh pressed the button (laughs) yeah that was weird to see his face in that movie see i also watched are you there god it's me margaret which was was so cute um just really heartwarming and relatable uh apparently a lot of it was shot here in charlotte but i didn't recognize any of the places but i um i need to go back and look up where they actually shot some because it's really cool that um like a lot of people in the film community here were involved in that or like were extra pas or Mm -hmm. um involved on set so that was awesome So we went to Greece for our honeymoon and we were just enthralled with all of the history and everything in that area. So it made Noah want to watch 300. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we watched 300 over a couple nights when we were there because 
so we haven't had Netflix since Netflix did their thing where they said nobody's allowed to share accounts anymore. I was yes. on my parents' account, and we had just haven't gotten Netflix again. So we got to watch lots of Netflix things while we were abroad. <laughs> okay. And 300 was one of them. Um, that movie's ridiculous. It is, like, so distracting with the CGI and, like, the AI, or, like, CG sets mm -hmm. and everything. Like, they have, uh, like, voice modifications on people, and it was more, like, fantastical than historical. Um, and I just thought it was really cheesy. So I didn't really enjoy rewatching that. I have seen it before, but it's been a long time. But yeah, not my fave. <laughs> that, that that just kind of sounds similar to Zack Snyder and his movies in, in general. Is it a Zack Snyder? It is a Zack Snyder. Oh, uh, okay. And Zack Snyder, my opinion on Zack Snyder is that he seems like such a wonderfully nice man. And I'm sure he's really wonderful to work with. I'm just not really a fan of certain elements of his style. Yeah. I think his I think there's a lot about his directing style that's really great, but from his films I've seen, um whoever like 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 the writing isn't isn't there as much. And there's things about Zack Snyder's directing style that I'm not a fan of, but like there's things about his style I do like also. Got it. And obviously, you know, like your mileage may vary. Of course, of course. Was that one of his uh, earlier ones? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it was. Feature. His uh, first film was Dawn of the Dead, a remake, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, and then 300, and then Watchmen, and then the Owl movie, and then Sucker Punch, and then Man of Steel, BVS, The Snyder Cut, and Rebel Moon, I think. Oh, sorry, Army of the Dead, and then Rebel. Army of the Dead, and then Rebel Moon. I have not seen any of, like, his. Oh, no, I've seen Man of Steel. But I haven't seen um, any of the Justice League, anything else. Well, if you want to watch a three-hour sequel to Man of Steel and then a four-hour sequel to the sequel of Man of Steel, feel free to do so. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks anyway. I, I, I want to see, like, Sucker Punch and, like, the, the legend of the, like, like, the Owl Guardians movie and stuff. Like, the, like, those sound interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more original, it feels like. Mm -hmm. I just have a lot of problems with the, with the, uh, with his Superman trilogy, but that's more with the writing than the directing. Yeah. Which I'm sure I've talked about before, but I'm sorry, you were talking about 300. That's okay. Yeah, uh, I just thought it was kind of ridiculous and not a fan. So, next, um, we got home, and I've had a few days off of work, which has been really nice, so... I watched, the other day, I watched Renfield, the one with Nicolas Cage as Dracula. Ooh, how was that? It was good. It was funny. It was entertaining. It was uh, relatable. There's a little love story. There's a little action. There's a little, a lot of gore, but it was like ridiculous amounts of gore. So it's just like, you know, it's fake and everything, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just like people's heads exploding and shit. But no, I thought it was good and it has, it has everything, you know, a little bit of everything. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, I liked it. I didn't know what I, what to expect, really, if I was going to like it or not, but I gave it a shot, and yeah, it was good. Um, then, after that, the next day, I watched Bones and All, finally. The Luca Guadagnino. Luca Guadagnino. Guadagnino. Um, who did uh, Call Me By Your Name, of course. Another movie where Timothy falls in love with a cannibal. <laughs> yes, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> Um, but no, I thought the lead actress did really well. Um, she was really good in it and Timothy doesn't come in until a little later, but, um, they do well together as a couple and I really liked the uniqueness of the story. Obviously <laughs> it's funny because in any description that you look up, it mentions nothing about cannibalism. So it's like, if I just read this description and I didn't know about the extra stuff, um, I would not have wanted to watch it, but the cannibalism made it entertaining. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it was really good. Um, recommend. Heck yeah, heck yeah. I watched that on Prime, and then I watched. I think I watched Renfield on Prime as well. Okay. Um, and then I watched Hagazusa, which has been on my list for a while. I've, I think I saw it on like TikTok, like list of witch movies or something. So it's like sent, set in 
probably like 1600s in Germany and the Alps, which is, it has beautiful scenery. Love like all the awesome places they filmed or place that they filmed. And um, it's just, it's very slow, not much happening, not much dialogue. Um, you just kind of watch things unfold as they do. And it's uh, very, like lo lo lots of long shots. Like I feel like film school me would have really liked this movie, but me now I'm just kind of like I'm kind of over the genre of like super slow and I don't know I was just kind of feeling impatient with it I was like this could have made a brilliant short film but it was just kind of like a lot of the same stuff like she you just watch her like well you watch her masturbate twice and I'm just it made me feel uncomfortable also because <laughs> I had um, our, our bathroom is getting redone, so we had Tyler's walking in and out, and I had to, like, skip forward through the <laughs> scenes of her masturbating. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. Ah. Um, but my favorite scene was when she poisoned the water source of the town because people were being mean to her, and... Oh, no, she... she there's, like, a sexual abuse scene that's not fun at all, and then she poisons the water after that so she like finds a dead rat or she finds a rat kills the rat puts the rat in the water source and then also pees on it and i thought that was my favorite part because that was like ha revenge you suckers assholes and then it was just kind of like a back and forth of like is she a witch is she not a witch i don't know um and then the ending is was like really disturbing so i don't know overall i didn't like i like the idea just didn't like the execution that, that sounds awful. <laughs> that movie sounds awful. I do not want to watch it. Yeah, I don't, I don't recommend that you do. If you're into that sort of thing, which is like the slow, like artsy shit that... It wasn't even artsy. It was just slow. Beautiful place, though. Beautiful um, Alps. Anyway, that's about all I got. Those are the highlights of what I've seen in the past few months that we've been away. But... Yeah, so if you want to watch The Little Vampire in the meantime, sorry it's not on anything streaming, but go to Goodwill. I bet it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's probably there. Let me double check to see if it's on streaming anywhere. Or you can always sail the seven seas if you're if that floats your boat. I said it's streaming on Tubi, actually. Oh, okay. Or the Roku channel, if you have either of those, so... <laughs> check it out it's the best i mean of course you know if two and didn't watch it as a kid or if you know like people who haven't watched it as a kid and you just watch it for the first time you probably won't think it's that great but if you have watched it as a kid and you have forgotten it until now i recommend a rewatch. yeah yeah check it out <laughs>